So tonight, it was a big protest on 125th Street. And when I was coming from the gym, you know, I seen like hundreds and hundreds of people marching down 125th Street, right? A lot of people was yelling, fuck the police and stuff like that. So I thought, because I seen a, like a zillion black people, I thought it was black people speaking out against police brutality and shit like that. Come to find out, the main thing for that protest was because MTA is beefing police security up in the train stations because they said there's a lot of homeless people and people don't want extra police because they said it'll lead to police brutality. That's one. And the second thing was um, they supposed to be taking them. There's a lot of Mexicans in the train stations in New York City that sell food. They sell like fucking... Um, like, they just look like Stella Dora breath sticks. I don't know what them shits is called, but it's a bunch of, like, sugary sticks and a bunch of dough, and, you know, they serve little hot foods and shit. Now, mind you, they don't got no vendor's license. They just, you know, they just came to New York City and said, yo, we gonna just fucking pedal in the train stations. You know, they do it, they do it on surface, too. You know, throughout the five boroughs. My thing is this, I don't knock how nobody get their money and, you know, blessings to them for, you know, not sitting on their ass and being and lazy. They not sitting on their ass or being lazy. You know, they trying to get their money right. You know, they trying to get to their bag and that's, you know, that's, that's a good thing. You know, because it is a lot of homeless people in New York City, functional and dysfunctional, right? But, um... I never seen no black person in the train stations like selling food or nothing, right? So the food, them being in the food vendors in the train stations, that should be a Mexican thing. Like the Mexicans should stand up and fight for that. The black people shouldn't stand up and fight for that because it has nothing to do with us. And then not only that, when black people go through shit with like the government or the police and shit like that, nobody helps us. Everybody just sit back and watch us get into it. So I feel, you know, if police, if MCA trying to stop the Mexicans from having vendors in the train station and selling food, then all the Mexicans need to stand up and protest against that or do whatever they need to do to challenge that now as far as if the um or the 500 extra cops they want to put in the train in the train stations you know um um it's it's like a night and day with that it's like a hot and cold with that and we're gonna go with the negative first the, the reason why it, it, it's it, it's a it's a it's it's a bad thing because all them videos that been going up on World Star for years of people getting beat up on a train and shit like that, and all the footage y'all been recording, you know, all y'all people on Instagram and YouTube and whatever and Facebook, y'all been recording all this footage of fights and uploading them on the train station. I mean, they upload them on social media. So basically, y'all gave them ammo. <laughs> The people, the peoples, they always their own enemies. Y'all gave them ammo to say, you know what, look at all these, all this footage and surveillance that the civilians is taking and putting it on World Star and social media of fights going on in the train station, people getting stabbed and different things like that. You know, yeah, we need to beef up security, so let's add 500 more police. That's the downside of it, because, you know, the people did it to themselves. Also, the downside is there's a lot of homeless people actually sleeping on their trains, and these people need help. Like, 125th Street and on the 4, 5, and 6th line in Lexington, that shit is barbaric. That shit is demonic. Like, there's mad homeless people there, and 
you know, they wild, they disrespectful, they'll, they'll be washing up with white with wet wipes right in front of you, washing their private parts, sometimes they shit on the platform, it's difficult for MTA workers, so, you know, it is a complicated situation, you know, there's a lot of fights going on, so maybe, you know, police is needed to keep the peace for, for those mishaps, and, and those minor trials, those minute trials. But the reason why it ain't a good thing that they thinking about putting 500 police in the train station because that's more harassments. That's more bag checks. That's more, hey, you get over here, you look suspicious, let me search your book bag. You know, that's more everything. That's more oppression. That's more them trying to catch people hopping the trains because out of chaos comes order. So what it is is this. Every time we do something that's rambunctious, you know, they, they'll wait till the people cry out, oh, we need this to stop, or we need this to stop. And then they'll come in, and every time you ask them for help in stopping a crisis, they actually implement a law to combat the crisis, but the law further restricts your freedom than the actual crisis. So yeah, there's a lot of homeless people on the train, they sleeping, they hungry, they begging and shit. So certain people are like, yeah, we need more police to stop these niggas from begging and harassing us every morning when we go on to work and when we coming from work. But then it's going to turn around too, the police going to be beating niggas up. You know, back to harassment, and, and you know, it's more bad than good. You know what I'm saying? It's more bad than good. So, people got to look at the vantage points, the alternative uh, um, solutions and stuff like that, because out of chaos comes order. And, 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 and um, you know, it, New York City is going to get locked down, basically. The blueprint for New York City 20, 30 years from now is, you know, gentrification, high rent, elite city, cameras everywhere, drones everywhere, money, you know, you know, it's going to be like some futuristic movie shit, bro. Uh, uh, Elon Musk or whatever his name is, he just came out with a titanium Tesla car. And I said that in one of my, um, I, I speak about that in one of my songs coming out on my next album like you know niggas gonna have titanium cars and there's gonna be all type of shit going on like remember we we, we heading towards 220 we heading towards 2020 so they're kind of behind on their agenda anyway so they speeding up the process you know what i'm saying new york city is a police state is a police city and it's cameras everywhere look at this one building i'm in front of Look, it's one camera, two, three. You see all them long poles hanging out with the black bumps at the bottom? That's three cameras, right? And then there's one behind me right here. See that in the corner right above my right ear? It's two of them, matter of fact, two cameras. Yeah, it's like six cameras in, one fr in front of one fucking building. And then it's moved like five more across the street in front of the next building. Then the next building. Then every Arab store in Bodega, they got cameras, like eight and nine cameras guarding their store. And, you know, if they don't get it, the police are fine them. If they don't get these cameras, the government finds them every time. So it's like you forcing people to accept your little camera spy watch peekaboo program. You know what I'm saying? And, and our liberties is took, being taken away bit by bit by bit by bit. So, do I think police should be in the train stations? Nah, people got to just find a way to govern themselves. No, we don't need them 500 police in the train station. You know what I'm saying? Do the homeless people need help? Yeah, they got people coming around trying to ha ask them, do they want housing and do they need help? And some of them is refusing that. If they refusing housing, fuck them niggas. Let them niggas sleep on the train, be homeless and fucked up. Because if you try to help somebody and they don't want to be helped, fuck them. Like, it ain't no sense of wasting your energy and taking time out your life to continue to try to help them. And they don't want to be helped. And then the thing with the Mexicans, with the, with, the, with, the, with the food and all that, that's their issue. That's not a black issue. Black people need to stand down and mind their business and let them niggas fight for that. You know what I'm saying? We, need, we, got, bigger, we got bigger fish to fry because we, you know, we, you know, we've been dealing with you know, racial tension the longest out of everybody. Like in New York City, everybody's racist towards blacks. You know, the Mexicans is racist towards blacks. The Puerto Ricans, the Dominicans, the Irish, the Italians, the Jews, 
like even blacks is racist towards blacks. The Africans is racist towards the African, so-called African Americans. The West Indians is racist towards the so-called African Americans. The African American is racist towards the African American because when you go to certain malls, you always got these funny type of black people where they act like they rich or they bougie you always got the black woman with the natural hair she don't got no weave she got the super kinky afro or um or hair and um she have the black panther tattooed on her body the black fist tattoos or you know she have the african beads and all that and then but she'd be a fucking weirdo she'd have a white boyfriend or she'd think she's super white bougie elite you know, she'll have the attitude of Whitley from a different world. If y'all don't know who that is, then, you know, she'll have the the attitude of Will Prince's cousin and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the light-skinned chick, Hillary. You know what I'm saying? She'll have a Hillary Banks type of attitude, you know, all that fake bougie, prissy shit. That shit corny, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, you have a lot of black people that's racist towards black people. African-Americans that's racist towards African-Americans. You know, you got the Bratton, all them Bra Braxton P. Hart and the Bridge type brothers out there. And I always tell you that there's different levels to black people anyway. All black people ain't the same as different levels. Some is militant, some is not. Some is for the cause, some is not. Some go on fight, some is not. Some is sellout, some is not. You know what I'm saying? And so on and so on and so on and so on. But yeah, man, you know, that protest today, that shit was like out the blue because I wasn't up on it. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't get no word on it. I was oblivious to it. I went to work today. I came from work. I went to the gym. I worked out. And I had my protein shake. And when I shut down the 250 to get my West Indian food, that shit was demonic. It was like people everywhere. It was a billion cop vans, motorcycles, bot cop bicycles. Then they had correctional officers officer buses You're like it was you know, that shit was just preliminary chaos man so the people was gonna lose like you know when a real real situation pop off <clears throat> and the people doing their little marching there's so much shit they could have did to them they could have gassed them out you know shot some gas bombs you know they could have shot the whole crowd up like you know like you know like this shit could go all the way all the way dark all the way left because America is heading towards the direction of communism. This ain't no longer, this is not a democratic situation, and this is not really even a capitalist situation no more. It's more con communism. It's more, I'm going to tell y'all what the fuck to do, and y'all going to do it, and y'all can't tell us what to do. Or, you know, those who make the rules break the rules. So, anyway, I just wanted to elaborate on my my. my, my my experience that I went through today, that shit was a little, was a little um, baffling, but not a baffling, that shit was a little surprising. Like, I, I was kind of off guard with that. Like, I wasn't expecting it. But, you know, the, the suit I had on was prepared. Like, if, if the jump off would have jumped off, then I would have had to handle my handle. I would have had to make a move to make a difference and do what I do. But, you know, I thank God that didn't happen because, you know, that it, it would have turned out ugly for me. I don't care. Who I think I am in my mind I don't care if I think I'm Thanos I don't care if I think I'm Goku level 5 Super Saiyan At the end of the day I'm outnumbered Like So even if I had to fry two warlocks You know what I'm saying If I had to cook two pigs The rest, the rest of them would have cleaned me You know what I'm saying One of them would have probably shot me in the head And turned my light bulb off or something Turned my TV off Then next thing you know I ain't wouldn't have been talking to y'all Because I had already been transcended to the different dimension I already transcend to, a, to a, more anointed, a more anointed realm. But yeah, you know, like, you know, shit is gruesome out here, man. It's only going to get worse. It's always going to get way worse before it get better, you know. So people, you know, stay stay ready to avoid getting ready. You'd rather be a warrior in the garden than be a gardener inside of a war. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, don't get caught with your pants down, man. Iron, intelligence rule over negative nonsense. Warlord, wisdom and righteousness is law with reckless decisions. Stay up like a cup, I holler back on my collar crack, we get up like sit-ups. The only time wise men hang around fools is when they educating them or enslaving them. I'm oxygen. <sighs> Darkness.